Good morning. My name is Ross Davies, and I am here on behalf of the ACD Society, a community dedicated to studying and enjoying the works of Arthur Conan Doyle. This is our second Doylean Honors Ceremony held here in the Mysterious Bookshop, the world's oldest and greatest mystery fiction specialty store. Yes? All oh, hail Otto Pendler. We owe many thanks to Otto for his generous hospitality. Today, we celebrate excellence in the Doylean community in four categories, performing and visual arts, fiction and poetry, scholarly writing, and lifetime service. Monica Schmidt will announce the honorees in performing and visual arts. Derek Belangelo will follow with fiction and poetry, and I will announce scholarly writing and lifetime service. But we must start with a few logistical matters. First, each Doylean honoree will receive a certificate and a $250 Mysterious Bookshop gift certificate. <laughs> Second, honorees will not be giving acceptance speeches. <laughs> uh, but they will, I hope, be willing to chat with you about your work, their work after the event, and perhaps even inscribe copies purchased in the shop today. In addition, there will be a signing of the first issue of Steel True, Blade Straight, the new Doylean Sherlockian journal published by Belandra Books, which is for sale here in the bookshop today, right after the running of the Wessex Cup. Yes. Third, some honorees will receive their certificates by post because traveling here today was not practical for them. Likewise, some members of the committees that selected the honorees cannot attend. That is, of course, disappointing. It is, however, the result of one of the best attributes of the ACD Society. We are a truly global community with honorees and members around the world. Fourth, many Doylians who cannot be here in person are attending online, courtesy of Mark Jones and Paul Chapman of the Excellent Doings of Doyle podcast, who are streaming this event right now. Mark is here. And thank you, everyone watching on Zoom. Fifth, the Wessex Cup. After we present the Doylean honors, we will be running our first Wessex Cup. Owners and trainers from the 16 stables with horses in the race are here, and they will be competing on this track. The course is short, as you can see. And in fact, the course is going from here to here. That's the finish line. Uh, which means the competition will not take long. Just about the right attention span for this crowd. I hope you can stay to cheer on me. I hope you can stay to cheer on the competitors. And now I am pleased to pass the gavel to Monica Schmidt. Monica, hello. Thank you, Ross. Um, I'm Monica Schmidt and I'm the chair of the Performing and Visual of uh, that Performing and Visual Honors Committee. I haven't had enough caffeine this morning. <laughs> All right, this year, yes, more caffeine. All right, um, this year's committee members include Jeffrey Hatcher, Mike McSwiggan, David Harnwa, Curtis Armstrong, Ashley Polisek, Steve Doyle, Amanda Downs Chaplin, Cherry Margolin, and me, because why not? All right, this category of Doylean honors is broad by design to recognize various creative forms of engagement with the works of Doyle. As such, it's been separated into three subcategories. The first is film and television and YouTube fully produced. Um, and that encompasses professional and amateur works that uh, have a polished production quality. This year's recipient is Jesse Amalo for the virtual tour of a study in Sherlock and his creator uh, from the Toronto Reference Library. It is available to stream on YouTube. Fantastic. Uh, Jesse is a service specialist and curator of the uh, Toronto Reference Library's Arthur Conan Doyle collection. She received her bachelor's in uh, psychology from Ryerson University and her master's in information from the University of Toronto. She has served at the Reference Library since 2014. Collecting the doily on her behalf is her colleague, Peggy McFarlane. All right, the second is in the theater and live performance slash YouTube unpolished category. And this showcases either professional or amateur works that have were performed live. David McGregor is this year's recipient for Sherlock Holmes and the Adventure of the Ghost in the Machine, which you can see a trailer for on YouTube because it was performed at the Purple Rose Theater in uh, Michigan. Um, <clears throat> David is an a Detroit native and a Michigan State graduate. He has been the artist in residence at the Purple Rose Theater in Chelsea, Michigan, a not-for-profit theater company uh, founded in 1991 by Jeff Daniels. 
Yes, that's Jeff Daniels. Mm -hmm. All right, um, now let's see. Um, David has been uh, has had eight productions at the Purple Rose, including a trilogy of Sherlock Holmes plays, with Ghost in the Machine being the final installment. We are absolutely honored to have David present today to receive his doily and a $250 um, gift card to uh, the Mysterious Bookshop. David. This man is dedicated. He drove 11 hours to be here. All right, thank you. Uh, I can just mention one thing. If anybody actually wants a hard copy of the play, a representative from my publisher, the esteemed Craig Pospisil, brought hard copies of the plays with him. Uh, they are available. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. Okay. And the third category is professional and, and fan visual art for either professional or fan produced 2D or 3D artworks. Uh, this year's recipient was actually on the committee last year um, and um, is Frank Cho for his illustrations in Bonnie McBird's What Child Is This? A Sherlock Holmes Christmas Adventure um, available, um, by, put out by HarperCollins, available I think somewhere over there. Um, <laughs> So uh, let's see, Frank graduated with a BS in nursing. Um, well, Frank is definitely full of BS. Um, from the University of Maryland School of Nursing, mostly to placate his parents who insisted that he have an education to fall back on if his art career couldn't, uh, couldn't you know, make it. Uh, Frank has done significant work for um, both as a cover artist and illustrator for Marvel and DC. And um, Frank unfortunately was unable to be present this morning. So his good friend and college roommate and my BSI classmate, Mike McSwiggan, is here to collect on his behalf. Welcome to say something in character form, so I will say, I deserve this. <laughs> also, check out the book, look at the back cover, there's something hidden there. I have not had anyone in the BSI tell me they saw it. Take a look. Okay. <laughs> So this concludes the performance and uh, visual arts um, subcommittee uh, doily honors. Um, I've been honored to serve as chair for this committee, and I look forward to next year's submissions. Thank you very much, and I now pass the gavel to Derek Bollinger. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, Thank you. So uh, I am the current chair of the Fiction and Poetry Awards uh, Committee. Um, and over the course of 2022, the ACD Fiction and Poetry Committee met regularly to create, uh, to design a scoring rubric for entries, uh, create committee rules, and to discuss the excellent high quality submissions that we received. I would like to thank my fellow committee members, Steve and Max, Masamishi, here. I'm gonna, sorry guys, I'm gonna mess up some names. Misanashi Higarushi, um, Samal Surendranath, and our former committee chair, who was committee chair 2022, Jay Ganguly, for all of their hard work this year. I would also like to thank Ross Davies and the ACD Society for continuing this award, one that honors the work of Sir Arthur beyond his work in Sherlock Holmes, and also highlights a new generation of authors following in his footsteps. This past year, the Fiction Poetry Honors Committee received 13 submissions for consideration. The submissions were scored on both their literary merit as well as their connection to Doyle's life and or work. Jay Gengoli took the scores from the committee members, averaged them out, and although we had some very close scores, these winners were the three that rose above the rest. The first winner I am very pleased to announce is David Markham, for a short story, The Unintended Offenses. Dave, why don't you come on up? Uh, Mr. Markham wrote a Sherlock Holmes story told from the perspective of the literary agent, Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. Mm -hmm. The story tells about the relationship between Doyle, Watson, and Holmes, and gives profound insights into all three men. As I wrote in my introduction to Steel True Blade Straight, and this is my quote, it is my opinion that this is Mr. Markham's finest work. That is a bold statement to make as Markham is considered by many to be the best living Holmes author today. David, thank you so much. Yeah. 
<laughs> Where does your award go? <laughs> Wait, 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 wait. Is it? Oh, it was stuck. Thank you. My apologies. All right, my friend. Sorry about that. Thank you. Thank you. It was an honor. All right. All right. The second winner I am pleased to announce is also with us today, Miss Margie Deck. Come on up, Margie. Uh, for her fine pastiche, Whitney's Reflection, in which Deck tells a horror story reminiscent of Doyle's The Silver Mirror. And if you don't know Doyle's horror work, highly recommend reading it. It's an awesome story. Pulled through journal entries, very Victorian, by the way, uh, the story captures the horrors of an unraveling mind descending into madness. Deck's chilling tale encapsulates the essence of the macabre that made Doyle's Twilight Tale stand out in his own literary canon. I am so thrilled to be able to give you this in person. Oh, well, I'm excited to have it. Thank you. Here you go. All right. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank you. Uh, the third and final winner, and our first for this award, is for a poem. Um, and our recipient, Paul Hiscock, is not here. He is in London, but I understand he might be watching us online. So I hope you are there, Paul. Hello. For his poem, The Ascent, uh, in this poem, Hiscock set up his stanzas in the pattern of a rising staircase. Um, as Sir Arthur's wife, Tui, tells of her difficulty in climbing the stairs for her new home. Uh, it also really is about the support she receives from her husband, Sir Arthur. The poem is a loving tribute to married couples and shows the various ways a husband and wife support each other through life. Uh, Paul, uh, really, your work was outstanding. And even though you're not here in person, I want you to know you really deserve this award. And congratulations, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, and to just to wrap up, another thank you to Ross Davies, the ACD Society, and of course, to Otto Penzler and the Mysterious Bookshop for hosting these awards. Thank you all. Thank you, Monica. Thank you, Derek. And now to scholarly writing. Uh, scholarly writing is impossible to define, at least in a, just a few words. Indeed, the definition of scholarship is itself a scholarly subject filled with fierce debate and a wide range of views. The best we can do is invite the Doylean community to nominate works of scholarship and then assemble a thoughtful group of respectable scholars to review the nominees and make the difficult decisions about which nominees uh, deserve Doylean honors. That is what we did. Uh, and I would like to salute the fine scholars who contributed their time, expertise, and care this time around. Melissa Aho, Christine Corcus, Jonathan Cranfield, Maria Flyshock, Anastasia Punchinskaya, David Leal, uh, Sylvia Pambukian, and Simon Stern. Thanks to all. And now our three honorees. Uh, our first honoree is Trevani Basu for her book, The Mystery of the Parsi Lawyer, Arthur Conan Doyle, Georgia Dalji, and the Case of the Foreigner in the English Village. Uh, Ms. Basu is a journalist and author whose previous works include Victoria and Abdul, the extraordinary true story of the Queen's, Queen's closest confidant, which was made into a major film starring Ali Fazal and Judi Dench, Spy Princess, The Life of Noor Inayat Khan for King and Country, Indian Soldiers on the Western Front, and many others. Uh, Ms. Basu set up the Noor Inayat Khan Memorial Trust and campaigned for a memorial for the Second World War, Second World War heroine which was unfailed by Princess Anne in London in November, 2012. Uh, in August, 2020, she was invited by English Heritage to unveil the blue plaque for Noor Inayat Khan in London. Uh, congratulations, Ms. Basu, uh, who is, I believe, watching us from Delhi right now. Thank you. Yeah, I'll, I'll send the chat. Honor is Richard Fallon. <laughs> Lost Worlds, Arthur Conan Doyle and the Modern Romance of Paleontology in his book, Reimagining Dinosaurs in Late Victorian Edwardian Literature. I would love it if he put out a children's version. Uh, Dr. Fallon is the Leverholm Trust Early Career Fellow at the University of Birmingham, where he teaches in the Department of Literature and studies interactions and overlap between literature and science in the long 19th century especially the literature of earth sciences, scientific writing for general readers, and turn of the century adventure novels, right? 
among other numerous publications. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The Lost World, illustrating the romance of science. And uh, Richard, <laughs> congratulations to you. He is, I believe, watching us from Birmingham. Oh. Oh. And our third honoree for scholarly writing is Brian Muskuski for the chapter titled Theory and Preaching, 1887 to 1930, in his book, How Sherlock Pulled the Trick, Spiritualism and the Pseudoscientific Method. Uh, Professor McCuskey is a member of the English Department at Utah State University. His teaching focuses on 19th century British literature, film studies, and critical theory. His research in interests include science and religion in the Victorian novel, the history of detective fiction, and neo-Victorian uh, adaptation. Do we have, have anyone here who knows anything about adaptation? <laughs> uh, uh, Oh, I need to get back on track. His article, Sherlock Holmes and Intelligent Design in the Quarterly Review of Biology, received an honorable mention for the North American Victorian Studies Association's Donald Gray Prize. His current project is a scholarly edition of ACD's A Study in Scarlet under contract with Broadview Press. Uh, congratulations to Brian, who is in Utah. And thank you all for uh, your attention and support for our Doylean Honors. Uh, now we come to the Doylean Honor for Lifetime Service. Uh, outstanding Lifetime Service is perhaps even more difficult to define than scholarship, but fortunately we have a special advisory board to identify a Doylean worthy of this honor. Uh, the board is chaired by Clifford Goldfarb and it consists entirely of Doyleans whose own service and Doylean expertise are extraordinary. Alexis Barkeen, Catherine Cook, Douglas Elliott, Douglas Kerr, Sebastian Lepage, Andrew Lysette, Glenn Moranker, Peggy McFarland, Chris Redman, Terry Sanjuanis, Daniel Stashauer, and Richard Spian. Thanks to all for their service to the cause. In the words of board member Douglas Kerr, the work of Owen Dudley Edwards has helped to increase the reputation and enjoyment of Conan Doyle's work over nearly four decades. He is an Edinburgh man and the doyen of Conan Doyle scholars. His book, The Quest for Sherlock Holmes, published in 1983, was the first monograph to take a serious academic interest in Conan Doyle. It remains an indispensable point of reference for later scholars, but is also very much accessible to the general reader. He was the general editor of the Oxford Sherlock Holmes, for which he recruited an outstanding team of volume editors, the series remains to date the default resource for serious readers of the Holmes stories. Later, Edwards edited the complete Brigadier Girard stories for, Canon for Canongate. He has also generously helped many later Conan Doyle scholars. Now in his 80s, his light is undiminished as witness a lecture given two years ago at the Conan Doyle in Edinburgh conference. Mark Jones of Doings of Doyle is here to accept Professor Edwards' certificate on his behalf. Mark? Okay. <laughs> That's right. I handed it to Mark later in case I got confused. <laughs> and lo and behold, I did get confused. So, congratulations to all the honorees. <laughs>